Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Uh, I'm going to go over it with you a better overview of the this book here, uh, Practical C++ Financial Programming. I've pretty well gone through um, the whole book um, the last 12 hours. Um, it's a quick read, but it is quite good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the table of contents and I'll walk you through my opinion on a lot of things because uh, this is this is this is a big deal uh, with C++ and obviously the language C++ and all the financial institutions out there um, but not only that for speed and uh, there's a lot of things I, I didn't know I mean it's been I'm, I'm not far removed from the language but anyways uh, overall uh, the book is uh, this is on Amazon as I said so I'm just gonna go through the um, chapters here uh, okay let me see how I can do this okay why don't we do this uh, we'll go through each each chapter uh, no can't do that okay so this guy talks a lot about fixed income equities a lot of examples the format of each chapter is quite quite useful um, it can be the big reason I like something like C++ with MATLAB is cross-platform on all major OS's uh, be it Windows, Linux, Mac, OS X. So because of that, that now opens up a lot of doors for me to no longer needing to be stuck on Windows. Uh, so that's that's a great option. Now there's also source code with this book. So you can download uh, basically uh, uh, the Xcode projects um, that are available in the uh, Apple IDE uh, for Mac. So you, you can get started probably, I'm going to assume, running these in, in uh, Mac OS X. And they should be, uh, and he says he confirmed it for uh, Linux as well. For Windows users, some, he says, will work on Visual Studio. They should work all work on Visual Studio. And there's also an option where you can run it using MingW, uh, the GCC compiler for that. Now also, I've said this in my previous initial overview of this, this book is not going to teach you how to code or, or show you the introduction of C++. There's just not possible. So you got to get a good book, be really comfortable with C++, and then delve into this, which is specific for financial. So you can see here the very first chapter focuses on fixed income, uh, equity, market, as well, basic examples. Uh, the nice format is is that he's got a, a scenario, builds it out, uh, and then he breaks up each section of the code, uh, and then he'll walk you through those sections, and then at the end he'll give you a complete overview of the source code. So you're not getting mixed match stuff, you're actually getting full, um, full uh, coding of that particular example. Now the other good thing is he also provides on how to run it, how to build it using the GCC on the command line, let's say in Linux or an OS X terminal. So that's also provided, uh, which is good. How to how to run it. Uh, it gives you little printouts of, of the running sessions. So let's go through this. So the equity mark, same idea. Now he goes over about the C++ programming techniques. Um, and here's the thing about common libraries. Uh, he focuses on the right ways to use STL for the containers. He also focuses um, on Boost. A couple of func uh, functions and libraries in the Boost uh, that are very unique that you probably can't get anywhere else. And, and he really wants to focus on efficient code as well. So that's a good thing as well. Uh, the classes, he gives you a, a, a highlight here on how to intelligently use C++ templates. So if you have want to use inheritance for different types of data classes or different scenarios within an asset class, you can do that. He shows examples here. Now here's here's the surprise uh, here. I'm gonna, I should try to do a, a, an independent demo of this using new plot. Uh, it's an open source new plot um, a library in C++. I believe uh, obviously it's going to be open source. Uh, it's similar where you just give it data and you have a little shell that you work with and you can run um, the plotting. I think it's pretty basic stuff, but it, I was surprised that that, that exists. He also does talk about um, uh, Qt as well uh, for uh, interface, um, graphical interfaces or user interfaces. Uh, 
he doesn't stress so much on the QT. My opinion on QT is good. I've talked to some expert uh, QT experts. When you start really heavily using QT, you're breaking away from the traditional methodology of using C++. That's the biggest disadvantages of QT. If you're developing, you know, even sophisticated uh, user interfaces, graphical ones, you definitely use QT. Uh, but just keep in mind that you probably the more you use it, the more uh, traditional methodology you will use with some of the other advantages uh, of, of using C++. As far as I know, that's what I've been told. Okay, so we start getting more into the into the really mathy stuff. But the good stuff about the mathy stuff, it's really broken down for, dare I say, an idiot like me to understand it. And he, he explains why you use it, when you use it, it gives you the basic uh, algorithm, the equation, and he goes through um, the code for that. Um, and coming from the world of various books, even in MATLAB, to have those kind of examples are really, really critical because you get some books um, that are pure theory, theory um, and there's no coding. So to be able to uh, decipher that and put that in the code, that's problem number one. Or sometimes you just get code and you don't know how to decipher it and put it into the scientific notation. So all these next chapters kind of concentrate on that and it brings it all together, which is kind of cool. So he's got various uh, linear al algebra examples, interpolation, I can say that, calculating roots of uh, equations, numerical uh, integration, ODE, PDE, optimization. Um, so those are, what, six chapters, seven, uh, six chapters, let's say. All the math uh, from stuff I learned through Khan Academy, it's, it's here in the coding of it. Very basic stuff. He goes over different uh, popular algorithms and, and, and modeling techniques uh, that are covered um, and it's very real world. Now the funny thing is when you compare that to MATLAB and you have this cap capability with the, these source code examples that you can use for your own solutions this is a great way so now you can no longer need to depend on Python R or MATLAB even um, because if you can do it in, in, in C++ and use these and use um, uh, from past learnings from very, very successful people, you want to do away with as many dependencies as possible. So uh, this book kind of covers that even still though uh, you are using like Boost and uh, the other one, um, STL, Standard um, Template Library. You know, if you're getting new into this, those are fine. I guess find libraries to work with uh, if you know how to do it the right way. But this is what the book gives you, uh, gives you that um, guidance. So optimization, uh, all these different types of solvers. Uh, when you look at uh, Simulink, there's different types of solvers. Now the aha moment comes, uh, now I understand. Because you're seeing it from the other side, how to code those up. He also covers a lot of the basic statistics stuff, um, which is very powerful. Now, as you know, just as another real-world example for, let's say, Chapter 13 on asset portfolio optimization, no different from what I look at. Does the efficient frontier, does cap end? Okay, well, we know about that and some other stuff. Um, but uh, it, it does cover the, the basics on how to find as the optimal um, portfolio uh, asset allocation when you are looking at different um, different assets to be traded in a portfolio. Um, and then this is the key one, um, Monte Carlo, in Chapter 14. Uh, chapter 14 is uh, critical. Um, Monte Carlo is very easy uh, in MATLAB. The problem with you use tools like MATLAB, less with part Python R, you don't have the control. Um, here you have the control because you're developing the algorithm behind the Monte Carlo. Um, he also talks about some of the different methodologies on how to optimize that. Which there's something else that I'll talk to you in a bit. Um, but it's, that's a good chapter. All these chapters are quite good, actually. Um, then he talks about extending uh, financial libraries. He focuses on Lua and Python. Now, here's my way of thinking. If you've not seen today, I posted Gigi's um, a little chart that he developed on the most popular languages for even HFT for jobs. Python, Python was number one. Number number two was um, was uh, was C plus plus. And then when you look at the quant, uh, Python's still up there by a long shot. C plus plus is obviously a big one. Java obviously, um, MATLAB still up there. 
not so much R, uh, but uh, check out that GG chart. But the reason I bring that up is because of Python. If you decide to use Python, this is he, he goes over some great um, methodologies to integrate Python, like build your C++ library, and he shows you how to properly use it with um, some Python um, objects that you create that then can be imported into your Python interpreter for your Python scripts. Pretty cool. And uh, he shows two different ways to do that using a boost uh, project or library, doing it that way, or using the native uh, Python API. Um, and again, he also covers a little bit on Lua. The, the reason I'm attracted to Lua is if I do decide to use um, a Redis, which is probably the number one uh, NoSQL solution, uh, Lua, the interpreter can be embedded into a C++ application. So um, I think that's why Redis was, was developed like that, because of that capability, you have your Redis, which is in C, or C++, I think it's written, one of the, I think it's in C the language, but if you have the ability to embed the Lua interpreter right into the uh, your project in C, I can see why Redis now uses um, the scripting uh, language Lua embedded right natively right into Redis. So that might offer some advantages um, with Redis and Lua. Even though I don't use it, but it's it's, it's an opportunity there. The other chapter uh, covers C++ with, with R. Um, some techniques I've never thought of. He's not using RCPP at all. Uh, he's using CMD, uh, the command, uh, and some other techniques. Um, uh, you've, you've heard me go on about uh, R. Maxima is just another open source MATLAB Octave kind of project. I'm not using it, so it's not a big deal. Multi-threading. Um, Multi-threading here, no surprises, using um, posit, uh, what's called p-threads, um, and uh, just using basic you know, semaphores, mutexes, all that good stuff, uh, joins, and just simple examples that you, if, you're, if you've done multitasking like I have in Java, it's identical. I mean, Java is pretty well getting it from the C++, so there's nothing new there, but it is introduced. Um, and then lastly, I've talked about this before already in the other video, C++ 11 and 14 features. Uh, some of the new stuff, Lambda looks cool, R value. I mean, there's just so many things you can do with, 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 with C++ to make, to make, to make your, pro your, 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 your project and your components very dynamic and be able to run them in, 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 uh, and at the runtime, not at the compiler, and there's different advantages for each when you want to compile or have it um, run in real time, or sorry, in, um, in the runtime mode. So there you go. Uh, overall, excellent book. Um, I would strongly recommend you, if you want to <clears throat> make the leap into C++ for trading, uh, my head's already spinning for um, the more HFT stuff. Uh, where does that me lie with MATLAB? I think MATLAB is still important to me, um, but this book kind of lays a nice uh, groundwork of uh, uh, foundation if you just want to build pure, pure uh, C++ systems, even C, because as I keep saying, all roads lead to C++ or C. You look at R, you look at Python, all those languages are trying to be as performant as C++. I hate to say I don't think they will ever be, unless there's some brain surgeon out there that comes up with some kind of tech, technique, but C++ uh, is pretty well going to be the future as well. Now, a lot of the problems I had, I've always had with C++ was um, memory leaks, the memory management sort of is challenging, but these guys have, have really addressed that with auto, um, auto uh, pointers and shared pointers through, um, I think it's now part of the, the core language, um, which is very powerful. Um, and that cleans up itself. So, you know, there's more and more reasons not to use C++ as your base language. Uh, in terms of the plots, uh, as I said, there's this new plot thing. I'm going to try to do a demo on that. So even have that, if you really want to go crazy on the interface, graphical interface, you can do that too using Qt. Um, so there's a lot of options available. But again, good book, great introduction. This can be uh, used as a roadmap. As I said before, with the .NET, I still think you need .NET. If you're, n you're a new programmer, um, trying to really understand how to do it, but do it from a simplistic way, because this is not an easy language. Um, 
the uh, .NET stuff, especially C Sharp, is a great language to start with uh, and become, as I say, I'm not a master program, never will be, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay with C Sharp and be able to get to go to the next step, which is here, and then go into the whack in the weeds with Linux development and other things, because the new um, the new uh, C++ 17 will address all that lower level uh, hardware as well. So overall, man, I th I, this is a great book. It's, uh, again, thanks to the guy who, who sent uh, me uh, on, on, and told me about it. A lot of people are learning about this book. It's only two months old, and um, yeah, this was a great, a great uh, addition, and um, definitely highly recommend it. And again, I have no affiliation with this. This, this, this book is, is quite good, and um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. And sorry, I don't like typing all what I just said because it took me 15 minutes to blab about it. Videos are just way easier because I'm a kind of lazy kind of guy, and I just hate sitting press for time all the time with all my blog. Over now, hopefully, I'll be able to talk to you later.